Hi, my name is Gaz the Mini Painting Punk and in this video I'm going to show you the method I use to paint my chain rasps really quickly and get them ready for the table. Chain rasps are the rank and file of your Nighthorn army and like the rest of the Nighthorn army they've got a really cool aesthetic. These are great miniatures and they can be a lot of fun to paint but if you're anything like me and you took advantage of the wonderfully priced Mortal Realms issue 1 especially if you're like me and you couldn't let your news agents send back all those unsold copies you may have ended up with quite a lot of chain rasps uh, I wanted to paint these in a reasonably short amount of time and painting a lot of the same mini can become quite disheartening and it's really easy to lose motivation so uh, after painting a few of them I've come up with a scheme that is really quick reasonably effective especially when they're all together in a large group and gets them looking pretty sweet pretty spooky and on the table so this first step is entirely optional some of the Nighthawk models come with these really nice ornate cemetery crypt graveyard bases and obviously trying to replicate that on every one of your chain rasps is pure madness so I just wanted to do something a little simpler but that would just tie the whole army in so all I've done is on about one in every four of my chain rasp models I've just taken a little bit of green stuff press that flat on the base and use my hobby knife just to carve in a really basic paving brick pattern into the base. The next step is just applying this uh, technical texture paint, this sterling mud onto all the bases. This stuff's really handy, it just gives you an instant texture on the base. For the ones that I had used the green stuff on. I had to let them set just a little bit before I put this on but by the time I'd finished the ones without the paving on these were pretty much ready to go. I did all this the night before I wanted to paint them because both with the curing time of the green stuff and the drying time of the Sterling Mud technical paint they both take a while so this was done before the day I wanted to paint them. I didn't really include this in the painting time. This is more like pre-prep, which is kind of cheating a little bit, but um, it's my video, so these are my rules. <laughs> so the following morning, I primed my chain rasps in white. I used Halford's white spray primer. Any matte white spray primer will do. And the first paint I'm going to apply to the model is this Citadel technical paint hex wraith flame this can actually be replicated using any light green wash to be honest the technical paints are great but I find you can achieve very similar effects with a wash so I just used the wash on all the exposed skin and bone parts so just the hands and the skull and I didn't you don't have to be neat at this stage you're gonna paint over pretty much everything else so don't worry too much if you get this on other areas of the model. Next is another technical paint. This one is Nilic Oxide. Um, this one I struggle to replicate with a wash. Um, I've not found a, a light blue wash that quite does the same as this. Um, what I do find with this one is it's best to water it down a lot. So in that pot, I've basically it's 50% of the Nylac Oxide as Games Workshop supply and 50% water as well. Um, just fine for the effect I'm going for. It's better if it's much more watered down than what they provide. And I just painted that on all the lower ghosty spooky bits. Next I just painted over the entire base with a reasonably dark grey colour. Uh, any dark grey will do for this bit. Then it's time to paint in all the metallic details. I used lead belcher, but any dark metallic paint will do just fine. And that's just the tip of the weapon, all of the chains, since they're chain rasps, and any of the things like shackles that are on their arms and stuff like that. 
At this point, you do have to start being a little more careful with the application of your paint, especially with darker colours and metallics like this. If they get onto other areas of the model, um, it can be corrected, but it's extra time and effort that you don't want to put in when you're trying to speed paint uh, a lot of models. Then I did the wooden bits, which on this particular chain rasp is just the handle of his mace. I used a contrast paint for this. Wildwood is designed to do a wood effect with some shading and highlighting in one quick and easy coat. These can be good for speed painting, but to be honest with this, for not much longer time, you could get a similar effect with just brown paint and a brown wash. So if you don't have it already, I wouldn't recommend shelling out for a contrast paint just for that small part of the model. Next, it's time to do the final stage of the base coat, which is uh, the cowl. For this, I'm using one of my favorite non-Games Workshop paints, and this is Coat de Arms Superwash Black. Um, this is a really heavily pigmented black wash, and it goes on quite dark. Um, because of that, it's not suitable for everything. Um, but for this, it works really well. In fact, it works almost like a contrast paint, except it's only £2.50, so it's nice and cheap compared to Citadel paints, and especially compared to Citadel contrast paints. I would recommend anyone grabbing a pot of this. Um, when you apply it over white like this, it leaves some highlight in, so it does some of the work for you. I also wanted the metallic bits to be quite dark, considering they've probably been rotting away for years so I used it on all the metallic bits as well and I also used it to cover the base so this is a really quick way to get a lot done in one step. So here he is, base coated, and with a nice head start on some of the shading and highlighting. All in all, that took me less than 10 minutes, and that's even with me filming, which does add a bit of time onto painting with, with stopping and starting for the camera. Now, it looks a little rough at this point, but in the next few stages, we're going to add some quick shades and highlights, and it's really going to bring the model together and really tidy up quite a lot in quite a short amount of time. The first highlight we're going to do is I'm going to use these War Colours One Coat Yellow Green. These are excellent paints as well. Uh, if you've not got any War Colours in your um, paint arsenal, I would suggest checking them out. This is a really opaque, bright yellow green and it works really well as a highlight on these green parts. It just makes them look like they're almost glowing. And it really takes that skin and just makes it pop loads. And it's so easy 
but it just makes a really big difference to the uh, finish of the model. Next I took a small dry brush and some white paint and just picked out all the edges of the spooky bits we painted in Nylic Oxide before. So just add in white to the edges, raised bits and all the tips of those flowing ghostly bits. I then used a small dry brush again, this time with some, uh, it's a dark bluish grey called Dark Reaper and it works really well as a highlight on the black cowl. Um, so just a dry brush over all the cowl bits and with the superwash black we put in there before, um, that just brings that bit together really nicely. Then I just used some lead belcher to do a dry brush on all the metallic parts. Um, so this is just the same paint, metallic paint we used at the start, but this will just catch all the raised edges and just bring them up a little bit lighter and just make them really pop. Then I dry brushed the base, so all I did with this was used a lighter grey colour to dry brush the um, paving flags and used this Rakar Flesh paint which is a dull creamy colour which um, I just used over all the areas that we'd applied sterling mud to earlier. This gives the ground a nice ashen look which is really suitable for a spooky model like this. The next step is kind of the secret source for this model. It's a contrast paint called Athematic Blue. Um, this is one I would say is worth getting. I have mixed opinions on contrast paints overall, but for this specific purpose, I've not found anything that works as well as this. So all I'm doing with this is just applying it to all the deepest recesses on the spooky 
bits we painted with nylon oxide and highlighted with white. We just do it in the bits where the they meet the cowl and the bits at the bottom where they come up from the ground and the very deepest recesses of it. This is just a really simple step and it just adds so much depth to those areas. Um, it's a really handy tool for getting this effect. You'll notice for this part of the video there hasn't been any cuts. I filmed this all as one block because I wanted to show just how quick those final steps could be done to take it from a really rough base coat model to a decent tabletop standard. You will notice that I have speeded it up a little bit for brevity and for full disclosure this whole part after the base coat was complete took me around about 13 minutes which after practice can get down even quicker so all in all the whole model has taken me less than 20 minutes from undercoated to tabletop standard. So here he is painted to a decent basic tabletop standard in less than 20 minutes. Um, if you paint these part by part in a large group, so doing one application of a colour and then rotating round your models, you can get a ton of these painted really quickly and as a large group these look quite striking and you can get that done in no time at all. The cool thing about Nighthorn is they all share this really cool aesthetic so using these techniques they'll transfer really well onto other models in the Nighthorn army range as well so I can use this to get the whole army painted really quickly using the same techniques but just spending a little bit more time and care on the bigger models and the characters. I hope you found this video somewhat useful in combating the big pile of shameful grey plastic that we as hobbyists tend to collect. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye.